good evening all of you i am mohan vijay singh secretary building building services engineering section committee of institute of engineers sri lanka on behalf of building service engineering section or committee of isl you all are warmly welcome to our eighth webinar as a building engineer building services engineer section or committee we organize this kind of technical webinars frequently to enhance your knowledge today the topic is secondary medium voltage and low voltage distribution substations in buildings our main intention is to give some knowledge about medium voltage distribution systems in buildings medium voltage protections maintenance aspect and the new trends in the medium voltage sector for that we have very dynamic engineer in the medium voltage industry engineer indika adhikari holds a degree in electrical engineering from the university of peradin he has worked in the medium voltage and low voltage power distribution sector over 20 years he is currently employed as a business unit head of global energy management and automation organization without taking much time i kindly invite engineer indika to start the presentation during the presentation you may post your questions to the moderator through the chat box at the end of the presentation moderator will raise the questions to the presenter thank you over to you indika adhikari Uh, thank you, Mohan. Uh, thank you. And uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, initially, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, thanking uh, BSEC for giving me the opportunity to uh, discuss with you all uh, one of my, you know, uh, uh, favorite subject. So. Uh, i will uh, straight away uh, uh, going to the uh, presentation uh, in fact uh, uh, this is a little bit of uh, vast uh, uh, subject but i try my best to you know uh, cover the most of the valuable uh, uh, information uh, uh, for you so i will straight away go to the uh, presentation Mohan, can I can I share the screen? Uh, yes, you can share the screen. All right. is it clear to everyone or yes we can see okay clear today uh, as uh, mentioned by uh, mohan uh, today we are planning to discuss about the uh, secondary distribution uh, system secondary medium voltage and low voltage distribution system uh, basically uh, uh, in a building so uh, the term secondary is coming uh, because uh, we have a primary also and that is why you know uh, the secondary term coming uh, this topic because we are discussing here the uh, 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 consumer end distribution uh, 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 in a, inside the building so uh, today's topic uh, will touch about uh, what is medium voltage and uh, mcg technology and uh, key features of the uh, 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 medium voltage and uh, distribution transformers uh, power system protections uh, and rest of the uh, uh, system like you know cable termination why we require the uh, surge arresters uh, in the in the installation and uh, typical uh, melv distribution system in a building uh, then uh, one of the uh, uh, important uh, thing type test routing test and the, what exactly required to test at the site 
and uh, some of the failure that we have you know encountered in medium water sea insulation uh, in terms of human safety reliability and the you know uh, uh, service continuity and uh, what is new i mean the, in the in the segment uh, digital solution what what is available for the mlv uh, substation how we can you know optimize the uh, asset management activities and how we can optimize the uh, performance of the installation so we will uh, touch in the in the last side of the presentation okay uh, we have heard you know uh, uh, different uh, voltage level starting from uh, extra low voltage then low voltage medium voltage high voltage and extra high voltage and above ultra high voltage so uh, voltage starting from 0 to 70 we normally identify as a extra low voltage and from 70 up to 1 kV we call it low voltage and from 1 kV to uh, 52 kV it is medium voltage in some uh, uh, book says it is uh, uh, 69 kV, but IEC, it says uh, uh, 52 kV is the uh, upper limit of the medium voltage. Above it is high voltage. In, in Sri Lanka, we, we, we have seen 220 kV uh, 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 distribution, but we haven't, you know, heard about, you know, about distribution like, you know, 400 volt kV, 765 kV uh, in, 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 in our country. But in some region like, you know, India, we can find some of the, you know, extra high voltage distribution line in Africa, in uh, North America. So they are into this uh, uh, transmission voltage level. And general applications, if you see extra low voltage is normally, you know, our, our, our uh, control and monitoring basically for an example our cctv system public address lighting controls bms remote terminal units those things are operate operate on, on this voltage level low voltage you all know uh, main distribution board medium uh, sorry uh, motor control centers those are low voltage uh, range and medium voltage you see uh, the utility distribution uh, from uh, primary substation to uh, the building and maybe some part of the building it is uh, medium voltage so distribution substation and the package substations coming as a reference coming as an example for medium voltage application. And high voltage is it's basically grid level and transmission level. As I explained here, here uh, as per this uh, IC 622711, uh, this is the you know, uh, uh, relevant IEC for the medium voltage, basically uh, for the general uh, 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 reference. It says 1 kV up to 52 kV is the medium voltage. Actually, uh, why we require medium voltage? Basically, if we require to, you know, uh, in Colombo, we know that if the, if the receiving our, our demand is more than 1000, 1000 kV, we need to get the, you know, bulk supply, right? Likewise, if we require more power from the system, we have to go for the medium voltage because higher the voltage, lower the current. And in, 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 in building and which are demanding large amount of power, anyway, we require medium voltage. Moving to the next slide. Uh, we have a couple of architectures in power distribution in uh, uh, medium voltage system. One is radial distribution. As you can see in the uh, first picture, uh, to, the, to the load centers, there is a dedicated line. And uh, it is not connected anywhere. It is loading all those 
uh, all all you know consumers through a dedicated line we call it a radial network and next one is the parallel system uh, in most of the you know insulation uh, some critical insulation we have heard that we are getting the you know two two parallel line for the two separate cb substations or maybe two line from the one one substation which is giving some you know reliability into the uh, 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 our uh, premises so we call it the parallel system and other system is the uh, ring distribution network so in this system from the main substation uh, it all all the you know substation in the uh, network is ring connected so advantage of this system is to you know if there is a fault in the uh, some of the feeder fault in the one of the feeder the advantage of this distribution is we can feed the you know network through the this side if there are fault in the cable still this distributor still this load end is secured with the power just just to give you the insight about the you know you know there are different uh, uh, level of uh, uh, distributions like you know from generating subset generating plant there is a step up station near to the plant right then it's the step up voltage could be you know higher voltage like mostly it is 132 kv at the generating level it's mostly a uh, uh, 10 10 kv or maybe higher than that 17.5 kv and uh, this voltage is step up into the 220 kv or 132 kv uh, voltage level and it's transmitted and distributed uh, up to the you know uh, transmitting uh, transmitting uh, grid substation so all the grid is you know interconnected or through the you know uh, this transmission substation from the transmission substation uh, it's going to the you know distribution level uh, is step down in uh, distribution substation and uh, from there from there there are you know bulk uh, consumers which they you know receive power power from the uh, distribution substation directly at uh, 33 kv or 11 kv uh, voltage uh, then there are you know residential customers as you can see that In, in from the distribution substation it, it coming you know feeders step down somewhere into the uh, 400 volt volt and uh, distributed to the residential uh, consumers this is the general you know uh, layout of the distribution arrangement few uh, uh, architectures and moving forward and uh, uh, this is the uh, will 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 move move to the you know switch gear, switch gear part uh, we are we have experienced uh, two things in the you know medium voltage technology one is uh, insulation media other one is the interrupting media uh, i'll tell you uh, what is insulating and what is uh, interrupting uh, in generally in the medium voltage system there are three phases rib and uh, insulation is here insulation is here between the bus bar and the interrupter is you know it's it is there same for the all three phases through the interrupter the breaking function is happening so inside the interrupter there is another media we call it interrupting media and the between the bus bar for the insulation we call it insulation media we have we, we see uh, few few medias for the insulation like air 
oil oil is quite old technology uh, mostly i mean the, in in present scenario we don't find oil oil insulation in some of the uh, uh, in in switch gear but it is widely available in uh, transformer and gas as a, a insulation media and solid as a insulation media uh, this is the you know present technology pure air because the whole world is moving uh, towards the uh, uh, sfc sfc6 free uh, green premium products so then uh, the sf6 technologies are now slowly moving with the air technologies with vacuum circuit breaking so those are the insulation media in in terms of in interrupting media we know air as a interrupting mostly uh, not in indoor switch here but in 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 uh, uh, low voltage application it's air insulation breaker and in the outdoor mostly in uh, switch yard outdoor switch yard we we sometimes see the you know air breaking uh, switches and when it's come to the indoor switch here technologies it is mostly a vacuum or sf6 and uh, we may find they are insulated switch here with vacuum interrupter we can find they are insulated switch here with the uh, gas insulated interrupter but nowadays the world is moving uh, sf6 free now the the technologies you know we can expect in 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 couple of years it will be totally a, a vacuum technology with uh, poi uh, technology for the medium voltage applications likewise you know even gas insulated switch here we can find with uh, vacuum interrupter and the sf6 uh, gas interrupter i think it's clear for you i am moving to the next slide uh, uh, just to you know give you the uh, remind or clarification again uh, on the various type of uh, symbol in the uh, uh, circuit uh, and the breaking breaking uh, uh, designation so first one is the uh, disconnected it's uh, it's giving the you know isolation functions but you know this kind of a symbol doesn't have the you know capacity to uh, current switching and uh, capacity to handle you know fault current there are two types of fault current one is <clears throat> one is uh, during making the fault can up happen making in the sense while while closing the uh, device fault can happen in the downstream other one is the uh, while breaking fault can happen in the downstream so <clears throat> even these two faults cannot you know uh, uh, manage with this kind of a disconnector this is isolated you see the symbol uh, this is connected to the it also doesn't have the you know uh, uh, direct uh, current uh, switching capacity but it has the capability of uh, operate at the making capacity it can it can manage the short circuit current if you are if you are closing the earth switch during that time there's a there's a fault happening in the downstream so then earth switch can manage it has the capability to manage this short circuit current load break switch likewise it switches load it has a current switching capacity and the making capacity likewise disconnector this different symbol uh circuit breaker it has the you know uh, total capacity of current switching and uh, load breaking and the fault making uh this capacity it's a full uh, capable device circuit breakers contactors it has the current switching capacity and this symbol uh, is for the withdrawable circuit breaker uh, this is for
this is for a fixed type. This is how it's shown in the uh, diagram drawing uh, for the withdrawable circuit breakers. This is the fuse symbol. Fuse doesn't have the isolation, but it's give the protections for the, you know, uh, one time protection for the uh, 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 over, over, overload and the uh, short circuit uh, instant. And uh, I have, you know, mentioned here, uh, some of the, you know, uh, IC standard, which is applicable in uh, medium voltage applications. So uh, switch here because those things are really uh, required when we are, you know, in, in, in design, designing and the selection uh, of medium voltage equipment and the component for the power system. So those are the letters and it says about the, you know, uh, constructions, selections uh, in what environment or what uh, uh, climate we should operate. If it is, uh, I mean, to have the, you know, better performance and how we test, what are the tests we require to verify the operations and those lot of, you know, full, full set of details available on those specifications. For the switch gear, it is six two two seven one two hundred, and this is one of the uh, latest uh, uh, IEC published by uh, IEC. Six two two seven one one hundred for the circuit breaker. This is for the medium voltage. This is for the all up for the medium voltage. This connector it is one zero two. Contact it is one zero six. And this is the conventional our block type current transformers. This is the latest uh, IEC. Measurement relay it is uh, 60255. Fuses uh, 2821. And LPCT and the LVCT, this is the you know, uh, modern innovations of uh, electronic type current and the voltage transformers. Now it's slowly moving from the conventional transformers to the uh, uh, LPCT and the LPVT. Nowadays, we see some of the you know manufacturers are uh, uh, mostly manufacturing their switch here uh, with these uh, uh, LPCTs and the LVVTs, uh, which is it's having vast more uh, advantage over the uh, uh, over the uh, conventional CTs and VTs in terms of space. In terms of, uh, I mean, the you know, uh, uh, in terms of uh, prices and the you know, cost-effective uh, economical solutions. And uh, okay, moving ahead uh, with the with the with the uh, different applications. Uh, as we heard, now you know there are three basically in in in, in indoor switch application there are two types. One is primary distribution, another one is the secondary distribution, as we you know <clears throat> uh, discussed earlier in, in, in our in our topics. The primary distribution is what, as you know, before you know receiving power to your building, there's a uh, substation belongs to the CB. From from the CB, it's all you know, 11 kb or the 33 kb distributions to maybe to your building and the you know, uh, rest of the other adjoining buildings. So this substation, which is mostly belongs to the CB is a primary substation. Because it is primary substation, it have the you know, capability to handle a lot of power and having the you know, big, big uh, uh, source circuit value and maybe, uh, some other features like you know in, in internal art, uh, some some advanced protection relay protection features, not like in secondary distribution. So in when it's come to the you know your end to the building building power, it's a, a receiving in there's a medium voltage switch gear up to the transformer. Transformer is 33 kV or 11 kV, and step down to the 400. This substation is called the uh, uh, secondary distribution uh, substation, right? Uh, it's having a lesser rating 
maybe uh, 630 amp maximum bus bar rating or 1250 amp bus bar rating having lesser short circuit capacity we don't we don't require higher short circuit capacity because the connected power to the bus bar is comparatively less less in the uh, than the you know primary substation other one is outdoor switches so outdoor switches is normally uh, load break switch auto reclosers rmu and uh, these these things again those are in the you know uh, on the overhead network right it doesn't you know require to carry a lot of uh, uh, rating this one also up to the 1250 amp 25k or 25k uh, 20k 3 second into that that rate so the new new technologies which is you know uh, uh, coming for all those uh, categories all those applications i mean uh, in in couple of years this our our old designs like you know air insulated the uh, switch here with the gas insulated circuit will be you know replaced by the you know new technologies for you to you know just uh, feel the uh, uh, panel feel the product so uh, those are air insulated switch here right this is the switch here as you see here uh, this is the bus bar bus bar part is you know insulated with the air bus bar part is insulated with the air this is the circuit breaker device so it can be either sf6 breaking or the vacuum breaking so uh, it's depend on the you know specification or depend on the applications uh, you, you can see and some of them are you know big in size and uh, maybe we, we may require you know the circuit breaker uh, rack in rack out uh, arrangement could be could be changed and it could be fixed type and depend on the application we have to select the you know required configurations so this is the general overview of the air insulated panel below you can see uh, the gas insulated switch here here what is the change is the you know the the bus bar the primary power distribution part is insulated with the gas it is insulated with the gas again having the you know a, a, a vacuum or a sf6 break but main main difference of these two type is uh, in a gas insulated switch here the switch here part is a fixed type it cannot move out like you know withdraw out like in the uh, uh, air insulated switch here so then in the air insulated switch here the the isolation part will will be done through the racking and racking in and racking out operations right but but for the gas insulated switch here there is a separate uh, isolator in between the bus bar and the circuit breaker to verify the isolation not like in uh, not like in air insulated switch here. air insulated switch here, it is a uh, circuit breaker that we have to rack out for the for the isolation since the gis it is a gas it is a fixed type circuit breaker there is a separate uh, uh, isolator provided in between bus bar and the uh, circuit breaker for the isolation verification and here you can see uh, the the compact type uh, uh, gas insulator switch here comparatively those are small in size in cost wise also it is cheaper because it's it's having a lesser options uh, than the standard uh, gas insulated switch here uh, the option that we can uh, get it through the uh, compact designs are very less like we may require you know advanced protection feature of course it may not be the you know uh, the proper options and metering in some operations some some panels again it's it's rather difficult uh, but for the secondary distribution it's having the you know required uh, rating uh, normally it's 1250 amp and 25k 1 second or 20k 3 second which is required for the 
secondary distribution level uh, we can uh, meet the you know uh, specification with, with this kind of a compact subset compact switch here and you can see in the below the outdoor switch here uh, you might have seen in the you know in the cb lines uh, this kind of a, a switch here in soul uh, you know that this is we call is kotori closer and the load brake switch and some of the you know uh, outdoor equipment outdoor circuit breaker which you can see in the you know outdoor substations moving uh, forward and here you can see uh, the main component of the switch gear starting from the uh, bus bar starting from the bus bar uh, and uh, this is the bus bar uh, 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 location and uh, circuit breaker circuit breaker will come here it place in this compartment and uh, vt maybe with fuse or without fuse and uh, surge arrestor device those devices place in the uh, uh, panel over there cable will be terminate here to the you know uh, bottom portion of the circuit breaker and the earthing switch current transformers and uh, this is the uh, uh, on top of the switch here you can uh, see the uh, low voltage compartment which give all the you know uh, protections and the controlling uh, facility to the switch here so this this is the low voltage cabinet in the door you can see the relays and the energy meters whatever the you know opening closing uh, uh, switches this those things will come come here and here uh, I'll, i'll try to mention you maybe and uh, mostly like low voltage switchboard uh, in the medium voltage switchboards generally has four compartment one is a bus bar compartment this is for the air insulated uh, switch here and the right side it is a gas insulated switch here uh, bus bar compartment this compartment is you know fully enclosed with the metal part we call it metal clad enclosed with the metal part likewise in the gis also the bus bar is a separate compartment and uh, covered with the uh, metal uh, metal work and in the top side this arrangement could be changed maybe the bus bar maybe come in the below and it's depend on the you know the manufacturers to manufacturers they 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 change the you know uh, the arrangement of the each compartment but generally it's look like Uh, in this arrangement uh, low voltage compartment it's a separate compartment and the circuit breaker compartment <clears throat> it's again a, a separate compartment and the uh, all those cables and the you know rest of the instrumentation part remain at the you know the bottom part of the uh, panel which we, which we call the cable compartment so in mostly in uh, general switch gear we can see all those all those four compartments but in some design like you know circuit breaker and the cable compartment uh, will be one and uh, in some of the gis the bus especially in uh, the compact type gis the bus bar and the you know circuit breaker is in one compartment so it's depend on the you know constructions and their specification that we have to select the uh, select the switch gear right moving and uh, i'll try to you know here discuss about some of the you know key characteristics of the uh, uh, switch gears you know uh, operating voltage operating voltage is the you know the voltage that the you know the 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 uh, uh, network uh, service or the network voltage uh, uh, supply 
which is coming from uh, in our case uh, Ceylon Electricity Board or the LEPO. This is the operating voltage, and uh, other term is the rated voltage. Rated voltage is the uh, uh, the the maximum RMS value of the voltage that the equipment can withstand under the normal operating conditions. So normally the rated voltage is higher than the uh, uh, operating voltage. It's for an example, uh, in our system it is 11 kV, uh, we'll say 11 kV, but you know CGA is rated to 12 kV. And the another two, two terminologies are the uh, uh, power frequency uh, withstand voltage and the uh, we call it UD, those term, those, uh, and the uh, UP is the peak voltage. Power frequency withstand voltage is considered as the covering all event at the rather low frequency. Typically, I mean the uh, low frequency, it is, uh, the equipment is operating at the 50 hertz. So this is we identified as a low frequency. Now, the this is the uh, uh, UD is the uh, continuous uh, voltage uh, that you know uh, the panel is withstanding. Lightning impulse is the uh, the peak voltage that the switch gear can withstand. You can see here the the the, the uh, power frequency voltage and the you know lightning impulse uh, lightning withstand voltage in uh, different you know voltage rating. Uh, for an example, uh, if we take 12 kV, we have a you know uh, lightning impulse voltage as 75 kV, and power frequency is 28 kV. Uh, 36 voltage level, it is 170 and 74 the power frequencies. And here we discuss about the voltage. There you can see the you know uh, current, rated current. Rated current is the you know the permanently uh, it can withstand this current. Uh, if it is within the you know uh, limits, uh, unless there's uh, you know any we do, it's it's not having any you know temperature rises. If it is operated within the within the limits, it can continuously uh, draw that current. It is rated current. Another one is the short circuit current. Short circuit current is the you know the maximum current that can carry during a fault operation, right? If there are a fault in the downstream, this is the maximum permissible current that can withstand by the uh, uh, this. Uh, this is basically by the switch, switching uh, devices. This is the uh, switching devices plus uh, the bus bar. Uh, this is a if it is more than the you know short circuit uh, rating, it is a disruptive test. Maybe the panel can damage unless the you know protective device operate. The, it's a, a severe damage to the uh, bus bar or the rest of the you know connected devices. So uh, another one is the uh, peak value of the maximum source circuit current. Uh, normally it is uh, 2.5 times of uh, source circuit current. You can see those uh, values in in uh, specifications. So those are uh, really uh, I mean uh, important uh, uh, characteristics of the uh, circuit break. And uh, this is again a very important uh, uh, topic, uh, service condition uh, of the circuit breaker, circuit uh, switch gear panel. Uh, there are two types of uh, uh, operations. Uh, one is normal operation. Other one is, you know, uh, the operation other than, you know, uh, described in the specifications uh, we call it you know uh, due to some reason like uh, some harsh temporarily harsh conditions uh, so you can uh, operate uh, on can operate in other environmental like uh, for a short period 
but uh, as per the specification it is uh, it is clearly mentioned in what condition in what environment the switch gear can operate for the better service life so ambient temperature ambient temperature should you know uh, should not exceed 40 celsius uh, and uh, the maximum the average day average should be you know not exceeding 35 celsius and the pollution pollution uh, i mean pollution means like it is uh, there are four category of uh, four pollution categories uh, one is uh, no pollution other one is uh, no pollution means uh, there is no any substance of you know uh, conductive or uh, material in the in the in the in the uh, network uh, in the environment and uh, category 2 is uh, having some conductive material due to you know uh, uh, condensation of the uh, 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 environment condensation there 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 could be small uh, conductive parts uh, visible inside the uh, uh, network and the other one is the you know uh, uh, harsh environment which is having lot of you know uh, conductive part uh, moisture condensation we can see on the you know part of the panel and uh, salinity level is high and there are a lot of you know corrosive vapor and we we identify this as a, a harsh environment uh, pollution category 3 and category 4 is you know the very very high uh, polluted network but for the switch gear uh, it is allowed to operate under the you know uh, uh, category 2 which is having you know uh, some uh, 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 conductive uh, parts temporarily uh, due to you know sudden uh, uh, temperature variation in the in the in the in the uh, environment in the in the room so humidity is another factor so the panel has been designed to operate less than 95% of uh, humidity relative humidity and the you know vapor pressure should less than you know 2.2 kilopascal so but even this is we under identify it as a you know a normal operating condition due to you know some uh, temporary variations of temperature some condensation can occur on the uh, bus bar so in that case uh, what will happen some insulation uh, breakdown we have experienced some of the insulation breakdown due to you know uh, excess condensation on the bus bus or condensation on the insulators and uh, some metal part can corrode right uh, in in so and at the same time the specifications uh, this specification 6227134 uh, specified you know how to how we can you know mitigate the risk of you know failure or aging when there is a you know this kind of a, 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 a temporary or condensation uh, and if you see some you know corrosion in the uh, bus metal part or some you know uh, some some sound sometimes we can hear from, from in, here inside the uh, panel so uh, and in this kind of a, a, a scenario this specification says how to prevent or how to mitigate the risk of uh, possible aging or the possible uh, breakdown insulation breakdown of the panel so mostly it described like you know we can go for uh, heaters inside the uh, compartment maybe uh, we can put some of the you know heaters we can normally it's come with the heaters in basically in uh, bus bar compartment and the uh, uh, cable uh, compartment so we can we can check whether these things are operating correctly or not otherwise we can you know uh, if it is condensation happening frequently, we can add one one more uh, heaters inside, or we can you know uh, 
introduced some of the uh, better ventilation system uh, with filters and something like that. Or we can, you know, a TAC uh, system can be introduced to the room to, you know, uh, control this kind of a uh, dust and the excess condensation uh, in the in the in the panel. Right. This is uh, some insight about the you know switch gear. Now we move to the uh, transformers. So, what is the transformer in fact? Yeah, transformer is a, a piece of uh, static equipment uh, having uh, two or more winding, and it's it's basically you know it's basically uh, convert power of convert power transmit power from one voltage to the another voltage right for an example it convert 33 kv voltage to the uh, 400 volt at the same frequency keeping the you know uh, power at the uh, same power at the both side right uh, for the for the transformers also there are many specifications uh, published as you can see here uh, because it's a very uh, I mean, very key component on the uh, power system. There should be more reliability uh, sometimes than the switch, switch gear required for the power transformers because uh, uh, maybe in some of the installation, there's only one, only only a transformers. So, I mean, we, we, we may require additional uh, uh, reliability uh, on the transformer. So, IEC has, uh, I mean, the published so many uh, standard for for both oil and the you know uh, dry type transformers. Uh, Six hundred seventy six one is the general, and uh, eleven six six double zero seventy six eleven is specially for the dry type transformers, and uh, rest not rest in fact not all uh, the most of the things are defined for the oil immersed transformers and uh, some of the special type transformers also uh, transformers for the wind power applications and uh, self-protected liquid power transformers and there are uh, different you know uh, sections in the ic uh, some of them are for the testing purposes and ability to withstand short circuit, there's a different, I mean, the one separate clause for the uh, uh, this test. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, here you can see, uh, different type of transformers and the uh, different ratings and uh, it's depend on the power uh, we are we categorize into uh, two uh, types basically basically one is uh, oil distribution transformers is normally uh, starting from uh, small power to the you know up to uh, 3.5 mva it's having both indoor and the uh, outdoor uh, distribution. You can see in the you know uh, in the pictures, uh, it's having sometimes it's having it with the cable box, having some uh, porcelain bushing and sometimes the plug-in type bushing. Uh, this is what we call the uh, 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 distribution transformers, which may come in the you know uh, distribution uh, system, maybe in the building mostly and the uh, medium power uh, transformers which is up to 100 mea those are the big transformers having the you know big power power handling capacities like uh, 31.5 mea 44 45 mea it's mostly you know in the you can see them in the uh, grid substation and uh, the casters in transformers those are mostly come inside the you know uh, uh, buildings 
because it's having a better advantage uh, over the oil. Uh, it's normally up to 20 MVA indoor uh, indoor transformers, but there's a there's an application with the outdoor also in the outdoor version. It's coming uh, uh, IP65 or IP uh, higher IP rated enclosure, but the transformer is same. And you you may find you know special transformers like earthing transformer, reacting reactor transformer, isolation transformer, and sometimes you know the transformers coming in the uh, wind and the solar generation. I mean, they having some of the you know uh, uh, changes to the uh, standard transformers in terms of uh, in terms of losses and the, you know the, the uh, efficiency. Uh, it's having the you know higher <coughs> higher ratings than the uh, normal transformers. And like I said in the last uh, slide, uh, you can see here uh, 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 some differences of the you know oil and the dry transformers. Uh, insulation media in the oil it is oil. Uh, in the uh, dry it is a cast resin, epoxy uh, cast resin material. Standard uh, uh, oil it is uh, starting with uh, one five. Seven and uh, dry type it is uh, seventy six eleven. Uh, this is the one of the uh, important point. Uh, winding temperature rise for the oil it is sixty or sixty five. For an example, if the if the ambient is uh, thirty, the maximal uh, uh, temperature that can reach up to uh, ninety. And then uh, beyond that, it cannot operate. And but for the you know dry type, for the class F insulation, it can go up to you know uh, for the 30 ambient, it's, it can go up to 135. It has the you know capability the capability of rising the uh, uh, temperature by uh, 100 degree. In terms of weight, this is less weight. Uh, this is having the you know uh, uh, overloading capacity also with the but it is with the uh, fans uh, for the system. Uh, maintenance is high for the dry. It is less because uh, it is dry. We just wanted to you know verify the uh, environmental condition and you know uh, other than that it is a maintenance free device. Uh, but for the but for the oil uh, we have to check the you know uh, at least by months in five years, we have to check the uh, uh, breakdown strength of the oil and we have to collect the oil sample from the transform and we have to do the testing. <clears throat> and uh, there are other devices like, you know, the protective, integrated protective devices. So we have to check the check it periodically, the functionality of, but for the dry transformer, it is only the winding temperature. There's so, a, you know, uh, PT100 uh, sensors in place inside the, uh, uh, inside the uh, windings, uh, it's only the, you know, temperature that it is uh, measuring. Insulation class for the oil, it is A, and but for the uh, dry, it can be, you know, go up to uh, class H insulation, which is uh, higher firing uh, uh, point, uh, like 205 Celsius. Uh, yes. Uh, due to this less uh, fire uh, risk, it has, you know, uh, recommended for the building applications. Uh, but, you know, cost is uh, comparatively, uh, but there's a small mistake in this slide. The cost is, cost of dry transformers is higher than the, you know, oil transformers. Uh, this is one of the disadvantage uh, of uh, dry design. Uh, likewise, uh, many more advantage over the uh, uh, oil transformers. I would like to move uh, <clears throat> for the transformer service condition. Again, another uh, important uh, slide. So again, uh, for the transform also, the IC has uh, uh, described the normal uh, service condition. Uh, for the you know better service life and the you know better performance of the uh, transformer. So 
altitude, it should be less than uh, 1000 meters. And uh, temperature again, uh, uh, 40 Celsius should not exceed at any time, uh, 30 Celsius monthly average. But uh, 20 is the uh, 20 Celsius is the you know design uh, temperature of the two of the uh, rated power. And the uh, harmonics, it cannot exceed uh, voltage harmonic. It cannot exceed above five. And uh, this is one of the uh, uh, critical uh, factor for the transformers. And the current harmonic also, it should not exceed 5%. So if it is exceeding, uh, I mean, 5%, then we have to take some other measures like, you know, we have to uh, harmonic filtrations to be implemented uh, in this kind of a system. And uh, this is another uh, valuable point. When we are using the, you know, transformers in the uh, generator step up applications, right? Sometimes we see uh, generator winding sometimes give some, you know, different voltage. For an example, R gives 400 voltage. Sometimes the other, other phases give uh, 405 volt. So, but here, what it say, this is not allowed. You know, the maximum tolerance is 1% uh, uh, difference within the, you know, uh, phases. 2% uh, difference is allowed approximately uh, 30 minutes. So those things has to be, you know, considered. Even the harmonic has to be considered in, in, when we are selecting, you know, uh, equipment transformers in our power systems. Other one is the, you know, uh, insulation environment. Comparatively switch gear, uh, transformer having the, you know, uh, uh, better, better, you know, performance in even in the harsh environment. So this is one of the, you know, uh, uh, big advantage uh, over the transformer. And mostly it is uh, confirmed even both uh, dry and the oil confirmed for the C3 and the uh, E3 class of operation. And when it's, when it's, you know, when it's uh, the, the, the room temperature or the ambient temperature goes beyond the, you know, 20 Celsius, what will happen to the transformer is, you can see in the, you know, uh, below graphs, uh, left hand side, it is uh, oil, here it is dry. You see, if you, if you take uh, the, the top line, if you take the top line uh, at 20 Celsius, the load factor is one. The, I mean, it's very important when we are selecting the, you know, transformer in our building. At 20 Celsius, the transformer can operate at its full load, full full power, full load factor. But when the, you know, uh, ambient goes up, like we'll say for 30 Celsius, it has having the, you know, uh, load factor of 0.9. Likewise, likewise, if the you know ambient goes high, we are having this disadvantage. Sometimes if the ambient is 40, we are having the you know very lesser 0.8 time in the uh, uh, loading factor of the oil transform. Likewise, for the dry, it also is more or less same. When the you know ambient goes up, even though it is having the you know uh, higher uh, temperature class, but it, the loading is limited due to, due to the, you know, uh, ambient temperature. Comparatively, it is, it is uh, having the good uh, performance against the oil, but still the uh, loading factor uh, reducing. So this is a good point. In fact, that when we are selecting the, you know, this is, this, this, this criteria are, as per the IC, so they have mentioned how to, you know, uh, uh, test how to design, how to, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, transformers. But the design consideration is the 20 Celsius. So when we are selecting the transformer to install at the 30 Celsius, 
so we have to take care of you know uh, provision this uh, factors into you know sizing sizing the transformer so sometimes we may not be able to take the full performance uh, at the you know if required full load conditions uh, at you know high ambient uh, moving forward uh, this is again a, you know supporting uh, supporting slide uh, the transform overloading uh, uh, overloading now the transform overloading overloading of the transformer depend on the transformer previous load right the corresponding winding of the oil temperature at the beginning of the overload so this is the basis the base point that we have to you know start before you know overloading the transformer so in i have seen some of the specification uh, it says um, i mean the transformer should be should be capable enough to you know overload like 120% for you know 2 hours 3 hours i mean in if it is required then we have to you know uh, uh, take into consideration during the you know designing and the selection of the transformers but this is the this is the you know standard uh we'll say for an example uh, if the previous loading factor is 50% and the operating uh, temperature is 44% if you want to you know overload the transformer by 10% like you know if it's take 100 kva transformer sorry 1000 kva transformer at it's operate at 500 kva and if you want to overload it to 1100 kva then we can overload the transformer for like uh, 225 like 4 hours simply nearly 4 hours so beyond that it is not possible so likewise if it is loaded to 90% at 72 celsius the starting uh, temperature oil temperature or winding temperature so it can run it can overload up to 10% for 55 minutes so this is has to be you know considered it's there's application of overloading of our transformer and likewise for the dry the dry here it has mentioned without the force air it is the natural air for natural air the, the overloading is little bit of uh, limited compared to forcia forcia uh, loading but for the natural layer this is similar similar scenario but uh, comparatively it's less of performance uh, than the oil in non forcia system so we have to you know uh, take those into account in 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 case of like you know there are two transformers in our building and one is fail sometimes one has to be overloaded for certain period but especially i mean it's directly impact on the lifetime of the transformer then we have to take much more concern about these these factors how much we can overload for how how many how many minutes this has to be you know clearly uh, clearly understand especially this could be a real scenario in the you know, in a building applications right uh, next uh, transformer paralleling uh, again it is it is a common uh, topic common discussion uh, in 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 most of our uh, building uh, installation there are two two or three transformers uh, um, sometimes working uh, parallelly or otherwise working independently so <clears throat> in order to parallel uh, we have to ensure that you know uh, same power but with the tolerance of 10% is acceptable same rated voltage hv and the both hv and the lv but there's a 2% tolerance is provided same vector group same short circuit uh, impedance small tolerance same load losses rated uh, current at the principal tapping so if it is satisfied the transform operation is allowed sometimes it is not allowed you know uh, if the transform is higher than you know 20% of the uh, other transformer it is not advisable to you know uh, have the uh, 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 parallel operation and uh, paralleling a different concept like you know uh, oil and the dry 
is is not recommended. Okay, this is a vector group. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's it's better to understand the, uh, this uh, format uh, of uh, uh, how they how they have, you know identify the uh, letters. Like the first letter is a capital letter. First letter is a capital letter. It's it is the you know HV binding. It is the HV binding vector. It is the HV binding. First letter is a capital. It is HV binding. Second letter is the uh, symbol. It shows the LV binding uh, connections. And if there's a neutral uh, in the Y, then it's mentioned in the, again by the simple letters. And the, you know, this is the uh, 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 displacement from primary to secondary, right? For an example, yeah, this is, I mean, to be remembered, in fact, this uh, first letter is capital, which is primary, secondary, means LV uh, and uh, neutral connections and the, you know, uh, displacement. So we can have the, you know, D by N 11 for step up transformers and step down transformers. So sometimes we may, you know, confuse with the step up, step up transformers because uh, it also the you know vector group is written in this, this form because its first letter is capital it's in the you know h y so it could be you know d y n 11 step up d y n 11 step down so some of the example here uh, it's having the you know uh, same y winding in the primary and the uh, uh, sorry h v and the l v winding no displacement uh, between two winding so we call it y y zero. Likewise, there are so, so many. You know, we, we may find so many uh, vector groups uh, in 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 different applications. So y d eleven. This displacement is you know uh, eleven eleven in the sense it's clockwise one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven. Likewise. So if if there's a Earth in the neutral, then y n d eleven. Likewise, I think I, I hope it's clear to you. And moving ahead uh, to the another topic, the power system protections. Right, uh, power system uh, protections. So objective of the power system protection is to is to what? To isolate the you know uh, faulty sections of the electrical power system from the rest of the you know live live parts. I mean, so it isolate the faulty part and uh, keep the rest of the part as energized without any damage to the you know uh, rest of the network. This is the simple uh, arrangement of the uh, 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 protection and the uh, protection uh, system, and you can see. Here, uh, uh, the voltage sensing, voltage sensing in the bus, or maybe it it can it can have the you know voltage sensing in the feeder side also, and uh, current sensing uh, in the feeder, and those you know sensing is feeding to the relay, and uh, relays could be you know numerical type relay. It can be you know program uh, what to do. And in what current rating I should do what? Like, you know, I should pick up, I should trip. And uh, then this command gives to the trip coil of the circuit breaker, then the protection works. This is how the, you know, uh, simple uh, uh, protection arrangement. Uh, there are various type of protection we see. It's depend on the application. Like for the general feeder, it is a simple, I mean, the general feeder, it is this kind of a protections like you know, 79. I, I'll, I'll 
come back to the you know this course uh, in the next slide and uh, motors there are different set of protections uh, some of them are you know feeder protection as well but specific uh, protections required for the motor motor functions and for the line it's again uh, uh, specific protections like you know line differentials is detect the you know line in the sending end and the receiving end and if there's a difference which is there's a different which means there's a fault in between so uh, i mean the, there's a, a protection called line differential to you know detect this kind of a protections and bus bar bus bar protection bus bar protection is working how like you know if we if we got a panel there are a lot of incomers connected and the outgoing connectors so I, I mean the receiving and the sending power should be you know uh, similar and if there's a leakage in between so there's a, this this bus bar protective relays will detect uh, this kind of a leakage and giving the you know tripping signal to the uh, all connected uh, feeders of this bus bar and likewise uh, transformer protections uh, transformer protections uh, again uh, again a, a, a specific set of protections like you know uh, transformer differentials it's you know it's uh, sensing the you know transformer current even in the primary and the secondary side and uh, it's calculating uh, is there is there any leak in the in the winding side and some specific protection uh, for the transformer is again a, a neutral current and uh, neutral voltage displacement and this kind of a specific protection is uh, defined for the transformer when it's come to the you know higher 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 capacities like you know transforming the substation it's a very sensitive and you know very costly equipment so then uh, mostly uh, transformer is protected uh, with the you know um, high spec uh, relay maybe with the backup uh, relay and uh, uh, this is the uh, arrangement uh, i mean mostly like in like a small transformers in the building or a, or a, 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 like you know 2 mea 3 mea transformers we may not using this sophisticated uh, protections but it's depend on the application and capacitor banks is a different set of protections and the uh, generator likewise Uh, as i told you earlier those are the i mean the uh, uh, for the feeder uh, it's current protection those are the uh, cores normally those protection functions are identified by this code uh, over current uh, sensitivity of fault and the you know directional current voltage frequency and when it's come to the motor protection there will be you know additional protection like over speed under speed and uh, depend on the you know application as i explain uh, they are they are in the previous slide you know additional protections functions coming into the you know picture depend on the application and the sensitivity of the uh, uh, devices in the network this is generally a, you know uh, 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 connections of the relay and when it comes to the you know advanced uh, relay there are lot of uh, uh, sensing uh, inputs provided in the relays like uh, for an example this is a transformer differential relay and it's sensing the you know transformer current in the board side additionally neutral current it's sensing uh, two sets of voltage likewise uh, we have provision to input a uh, uh, lot of information to the relay uh, depend on the you know uh, uh, applications and uh, some of the information about the you know uh, uh, cable side uh, cable termination and the surge arresters and uh, mostly uh, we see two types of uh, cable termination termination in uh, uh, basically in air insulated application and the uh, gas insulated application uh, air insulated application it is the standard uh, terminations uh, we just terminate the cable and connect here through the lug 
and if it is if there's a surge arrestors again as surge arrestor can easily you know uh, connect here but uh, in in gis application it is a bit you know ready made solutions coming like uh, it's a, we call it a plug in type plug in type connectors uh, uh, couple of uh, depend on the number of cables and surge arrestors will be connected to the uh, this terminal uh, this is a typical uh, layout of the uh, uh, building uh, power system uh, you can see here the uh, medium voltage switch here and the transformers mostly inside the uh, uh, building it is a dry uh, the oil is replaced with the dry and the uh, uh, right side it is a low voltage distribution the typical uh, layout of the equipment uh, likewise the here it is mentioned the cables coming from cb uh, to the substation room uh, and going to the medium voltage panel and power up the transformer and low voltage distribution and this is the typical uh, arrangement uh i see go to the uh, sorry give me a second yeah i just wanted to show you some you know typical uh, sld power flow diagram of the uh, building uh, this is the you know receiving substation which is belongs to the cb uh, from there it's coming the line to the our distribution panel right and uh, uh, there's a, uh, another power station power plant uh, inside the building uh, inside the premises which is uh, generating 11 kv distributions to the uh, building as a, a, a replace, replacement source so uh, from there it, it could be identified as a primary uh, substation because uh, this one is a primary substation and then from here the uh, rest of the you know building is powered through the uh, transformers this is the you know simple uh, arrangement and uh, low voltage distribution likewise uh, i think those things are very much familiar to you so i am moving uh, to the presentation again yeah the transformers uh, this is one of the you know uh, important uh, things uh, the testing right uh, testing uh, in fact uh, uh, there are three type of test that we can identify uh, for the transformer one is type test as per the you know this ic6 6, 6, uh, 676 2 these two test identified as a type test and the uh, these four set test are the uh, special test right and the uh, so the type test is normally done bo- done for the you know uh, type and the special test normally carry out for the uh, design verifications and the routing test normally it has to be done at factory for all the you know transformers they manufacture so this is the you know uh, test uh, that has to be you know verified uh, during the you know our 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 design and uh, the, the the selected transformer should be tested for the type test and the, sometimes it's required the you know uh, a short circuit test and the sometimes sound level test special those are coming on the special test and the routing test has to be done during the uh, uh, factory uh, for all the uh, transformers manufactured likewise for the switch gear uh, so many test uh, to verify the uh, design 
dielectric test ratio test uh, radio interference test measurement of the resonance of the circuit temperature rise state so many test i don't want to waste the uh, waste the time here and uh, routing test even the routing test has to be performed for the each and every uh, panel that are manufacturing in the in the in the factories so these test are uh, compulsory test routing test and when it's come to the site test again uh, uh, because uh, site site test also very important uh, after erections to verify the you know operations uh, operations proper operations of the equipment and uh, mostly it is uh, manufacturer recommendations and uh, sometimes you know the the, the relevant uh, iec does not you know discuss more about the you know site test because the the required routing test has to be passed uh, before dispatch and it is a compulsory round of testing uh, but when it's come to the site after assembling all those uh, panel into one one single unit that some voltage test has to be performed like insulation test and the sometimes the you know power frequency test at a reduced voltage we normally perform and uh, one of the compulsory test is you know uh, relay verification test we have to have the you know secondary uh, uh, current injection to verify the all those protections and the uh, uh, secondary control uh, uh, system and uh, some operational test those few sets of test are uh, compulsory before energizing the you know panel to 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 supply the power to the network right so i am moving to the you know uh, some of the uh, experience and some of the failures uh, in the you know power system uh, maybe due to you know uh, uh, lack of uh, lack of specification or to the i mean there are certain you know failures has happened uh, in the past and i am i am showing this uh, video to you just to see uh, uh, the, the the just to see the, the damage of the you know uh, insulation i think you can uh, see the video the operator is racking out the you know circuit breaker from the uh, uh, fixed position what from the service position suddenly see the what's happened there's a internal arc during the racking racking out operations i mean the, the operator has you know uh, racking out the circuit breaker uh, in you know uh, door is open you see door is open in this operation so i mean this is a severe damage to the operator as well as the, the property the panel and i mean uh, this is uh, uh, we'll see how we can you know uh, improve this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, incidents in the you know uh, 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 through the specification when it's when it's come to the you know new set of uh, specification and uh, major cause of me system failure uh, insulation failure due to uh, thermal aging and the partial discharges due to you know uh, the switch is operating except uh, normal operating conditions and uh, this can lead to a partial discharges thermal aging is another big thing in the medium volt insulation and the foreign substance in inside the equipment this could lead to a flash over like you know sometimes uh, the snake and the rats can go inside then we have experienced a lot of failures in the uh, panels and internal lock like we saw in this uh, previous video and the uh, lightning and over voltage condition lightning could be a direct lightning and sometimes the switching transient uh, conditions that can uh, generate within the network i mean the while you know operating a circuit breaker when there's a you know uh, 
sequence operation of the uh, circuit breaker there could be a uh, transient uh, voltage could generate within the system that can cause a damage to the uh, uh, maybe circuit breaker or the uh, some component like uh, vts vts this could be happen and another thing is in adequate maintainers this is a, this is another big role and failure of uh, malfunction of the protection fun protection features like if the relay is not working properly it could be a i mean the disaster environmental impact like you know uh, climate flooding and uh, changes changing ambient condition and the wrong operation human errors those things could be a could be another another reason for the me system failure so as you saw in the you know last uh, slide this is a fatal damage to the you know uh, operator and the you know equipment so in 2003 uh, ic has you know published a new uh, standard to overcome this kind of a uh, situations over the you know experience that they have gained in the in the past operations so they have introduced new classifications like internal arc loss of service continuity and the partial uh, partitioning classifications uh, into the uh, into the world and with that and the, i mean the, the system uh, become more uh, better better solutions and uh, values gained through the experience and benefited to the best thing is benefited to the customer so we'll see what are those uh, classifications so internal arc protected from the internal arc so as you saw that in this uh, video the operator has you know uh, operating the uh, uh, switch gear by opening the front door now what has developed what has developed in the in the in the in the uh, guideline as given by the iec and the you know manufacturers has developed the switch gear to comply to all those you know guidelines so if there are a internal lock you can see a uh, internal lock uh, sorry there could be a internal lock when the when when anything can be happen due to insulation failure or racking rack out of operations or whatever the lightning surges anything can be happen what will happen if there are internal lock now they have defined the you know switch here so that if there are internal lock all those you know arc pressure and the you know arc cannot come out cannot come out to you know uh, from the you know front and the lateral and the rear side there's a you know uh, it is clearly defined so it has to go up or it has to go into the you know uh, uh, cable chamber so this is the you know uh, very important you know classification developed by uh, ic so the classification comes like that a means uh, the authorized person b means public f means front l means lateral and the rear so it's come like you know uh, uh, a f l r a f l r means authorized personnel only and it is protected for front lateral and the rear operation so if it is a f l r panel if during the you know uh, internal arc if someone you know sitting in front of the panel or in the lateral side or the rear side nothing will happen to him so it is confirmed protected for the this kind of rating i took it as a example it's coming under the coming in the name plate also this is a very good i mean the uh, development done by the uh, modern switch gear the for the human safety so this is some of the examples i am i am quickly go through the uh, presentations uh, some of the examples but in this insulation because those are very important in our in our applications uh, the switch board you, you know install against the wall in that insulation so we don't require to have a you know the protection in the rear side so i mean then protection in the you know both in the front and the lateral side is enough and but in this application 
the switch has been installed in in middle of the room which is required the you know protection in the rear side so in if it is uh, if it is the our application then we have to select the switch gear with you know four side internal arc protections and here what has happened you know uh, in 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 some of our installation uh, the the room height sometimes it's challenging so if it is more than 4 meter uh, the, the the room height so we don't require to have a you know uh, we can freely discharge the you know uh, arc pressure uh, to the uh, top side of the panel otherwise we have to have the you know uh, in uh, uh, tunnel kind of arrangement to bring the you know pressure outside the uh, substation room if it is less than 4 meters so these things has to be considered in our you know substation designing and uh, another important factor is the loss of service continuity this is again a, a new classifications comes under the, this uh, uh, specification uh, uh, loss of service continuity this is say what is mean when an when an accessibility compartment of the switch is open we will say like uh, cable compartment so this says in this classification loss of service continuity category 1 it says when the bus bar and the uh, bus bar and therefore the complete switch gear must be isolated so in, in that case we cannot access to the any of the switch gear uh, any of the uh, uh, other part of the uh, switch gear uh, if we if we trying to access to the uh, cable compartment likewise uh this classification has been made for uh, like lsc2 a and b b is the best so then the incoming cable uh, the switch bus bar and the adjacent uh, switch gear panel can remain in the operation so the beauty of this uh, classification is that like like you know if we are if you want to do some maintenance work in one of the panel by keeping the you know total bus bar alive and the keeping the rest of the you know adjoining panel alive and then we have to go for this kind of a selections right go for ls c to b this device only we give us the provisions to you know work on work on this arrangement right going uh, fast like because time is very limited uh partition between the uh compartment uh metal partition between compartment like we discussed like earlier we discussed this uh, uh these things and uh insulator cover this is pi this is pm for the metal clad metal enclosed it should be pm so okay now i mean we are we have come to the you know uh, uh, final uh, part of the presentation so uh, nowadays we are discussing uh, all those you know switch gear to be you know to be connected uh, and uh, i mean monitored and controlled so like you know if we, the this organization has uh, done the survey uh about the you know major major failure in the power system that they have identified that the you know uh, most of the cases of failures are due to you know loose connections and the you know insulation breakdown and some of the you know condensation on the uh, uh, panel inside port up penetrated to the various origins and the uh, right racking uh, issues and the ground fall uh, issues those are identified as a major uh, 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 scenarios for the power system failure so going i mean the as a as a best solution for this kind of a things so now the market is market has developed certain sensors uh, installed in various part of the uh, switch gear like you know in the cable compartment there's a there's a thermal sensors can be installed 
and uh, to check the humidity and the, those things that the environmental sensors can install in the cable compartment in which some you know from the from the cable trench water can water can come inside the panel it's a severe damage to the panel and internal arc sorry arc flash protection can be implemented uh, in the bus bar chamber or in the cable chamber so architecture is that this digital architect has been you know de developed for this kind of arrangement and the uh, sensors are installed in the various part of the switch gear to sense the thermal uh, conditions and the you know uh, humidity and the environmental conditions and if there's an arc due to you know uh, some of the failures internal failures insulation failures those things are you know uh, connected together through the sensors and communicated to our uh, network right it's not you know communicating information to the uh, network uh, but it gives you know total uh, uh, status report uh, what is the you know uh, uh, temperature what is the uh, maintenance uh, status and give a lot of information to the uh, facility owner to plan their uh, work the preventive maintenance activities and uh, and you know it's a much better comprehensive uh, uh, awareness of their uh, system i mean you know this is the uh, new technologies uh, coming to the uh, market in terms of you know uh, proper uh, uh, maintenance of the equipment i think uh, we are uh, ending the uh, presentations uh, maybe uh, i am passing the uh, time uh, over to you uh, mohan thank you engineer adhikari good evening can you hear me properly yeah yeah we can Okay, thank you. I'm Mahesh Udyanga from Building Service Engineering Sectional Committee. Uh, so now we are going to start a Q&A session. Uh, so I will direct all the questions which you have posted in the chat box one by one. Uh, based on the time available, I will not mention names of the question rights gentlemen. So Engineer Adhikari, let me present the questions. So our first question is, what are the main concerns issues while integrating distribution generation at MV level? Is the bidirectional power flow a major concern? Okay. Uh, uh, bidirectional power. I mean, when we are when when we are getting the power from the CD, I mean, unless we don't have the you know generation within our within our premises, there won't be a, you know back back flow to the you know utilities but nowadays uh, there are you know instant that we have seen like you know in in soft transitions of power when there's a you know uh, power failure your genset comes to the system and you know uh, uh, when the utility returns it parallel with the genset and you know that this is the instant that you know power plan power can flow into the you know utility side in that case even though it is, you know, uh, connected paralleling to, to the, you know, very small uh, period of time, but still, you know, we have to, we have to take a concern about, you know, some uh, added uh, protections like, you know, uh, phase shift, uh, high landing protections and uh, rigorous power and rate of change of frequency. And some of the, you know, uh, code has been published by the uh, uh, CB. Uh, in terms of uh, with some of the features of the you know grid uh, interconnections uh, protections uh, to 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 isolate the system in in that case there could be a you know reverse power okay thank you uh, next one as the amount of power consumed increases which one is more suitable mv or lv uh there's a limitation from the cb itself if the if the total uh, 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 install capacity is 
more than 1000 kva we don't have options other than going for the me me system uh, but 1000 kva means uh, 1600 uh, amp, amps in the lv network so i think uh, up to 1000 we don't uh, need to go for the uh, me medium voltage distribution okay thank you next one does the electrical room need a precision air condition uh, with the bracket consider the humidity in case of air insulated panel room yeah it is a good question in fact <clears throat> i mean typically as per the as per the standard they have mentioned nominated the you know normal operating conditions but practically practically it is rather difficult for us to you know maintain this kind of a environment throughout the year so sometimes you know due to the variation in the climate the dust mostly in a building even in the industry dust can you know come into the switch gear room and uh, uh, temperature even temperature can exceed about 40 celsius in some 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 days in the in the year so in that scenario the you know performance of the transformers or performance of the switch gear over the lifetime will be challenging so in that scenario it is advisable to you know uh, install the system in the control environment which is having the you know proper ventilation or with the filters or with you know hvac uh, hvac uh, 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 control i hvac control is both you know it's reduced the room temperature and the you know uh, humidity level inside the uh, uh, control room Okay, thank you. Next one. How many times should maintain a indoor gas insulated switch gear for a year? Okay. Uh, normally, uh, for the gas insulated switch gear, for the for the primary primary portion of the switch gear, which is you know circuit breaker compartment and the, you know bus bar compartment, this is not accessible. In fact. this is not accessible compartment this is uh, cannot access access but for the you know low voltage compartment and the you know uh, cable compartment of course we need to do certain uh, maintenance work and especially maintenance work has to be done periodically for the you know protection system and uh, at least once in 3 uh, years uh, this protection scheme to be verified and uh, not like in ais we, we we don't need we don't we do not need to do any uh, i mean the maintenance work at the you know gis panel okay thank you next one what are the challenges faced during mb and lb power distribution okay uh main challenge is you know uh, medium voltage is the challenge again because it's having higher stress of voltage so i mean the insulation is much more critical uh, in this kind of a uh, application we know that uh, sometimes the low voltage is less stress it is 400 volt but for the uh, uh, we can insulate the 400 volt even with you know simple uh, simple tape but medium voltage the the xlpe the you know uh, uh, latest uh, insulation for an example 11 kv we required you know at least uh, if i am correct uh, 8 mm thick thickness of the insulation to insulate the 11 kv system and likewise the uh, stresses are very high in uh, medium voltage so even though the current is less now the insulation and the spacing is much more critical and you know we have to maintain the proper environment uh, otherwise you know the uh, in 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 especially in air condition air, air insulated panel this uh, insulation air insulation can break any time so i mean the me is a much more dangerous and we have to take care of that because that is why because so many iec you know standard does define for this kind of a insulation 
okay thank you next one which type of sidwear being used in typical wind turbine station in sri lanka when lv generation is stepped up to 33 kv distribution level uh, sorry uh, sorry mahesh can you repeat i didn't get you clearly which type of sidwear being used in typical wind turbine station in sri lanka when lv generation is stepped up to 33 kv distribution level okay uh i think there are two types i mean uh, we can have the you know conventional switch gear in a separate uh, room a yeah, condition isolated uh, cannot control environment other now uh, with the new turbines which is coming into the market uh, those are i mean the especially big in size so these uh, wing towers we can place the you know uh, compact gas insulated switch gear uh, in the you know turbine footing itself so uh, i mean this is uh, mostly mostly because uh, the connected power is less like you know 3 3 megawatt 5 megawatt the max in a, in a turbine so we can satisfy with the you know 630 amp 20k one second uh, switch gear so it's easily easily can gain with the you know uh, 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 small compact uh, rmu okay thank you next one uh, what does electrical lifetime of a circuit breaker like 30 times mean like 30 times mean 30 time mean what does electrical lifetime of a circuit breaker like 30 times mean Uh, i i am not getting it clearly but for for a circuit breaker uh, there are uh, three types uh, defined as per the ic uh, one is uh, m0 m1 and m2 uh, m2 is having you know uh, 10000 operations mostly you know uh, circuit breakers coming in the you know standard switch gear switch gear gis and ais it's having the you know 10000 uh, operations Uh, both mechanical and electrical uh, and uh, the circuit breakers coming in the compact kind of a switch gear which is uh, rmu it's having the you know uh, 20 sorry 2 2000 operations and some you know earth switch sometimes the disconnector which is uh, rarely operate which is coming together with the sometimes the circuit breaker uh, it's having sometimes the 1000 uh, uh, operations i am not quite sure is is this what what the answer is uh, required but uh, the 30 min is not clear to me to be frank okay thank you uh, next question what is the earth resistance value for mv switch gear panels uh, earth resistance value for mv switch gear panel right okay Uh, not for the panel in fact uh, earth resistance to be you know uh, satisfy in the earthing system right uh, earthing is a uh, quite you know uh, 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 important topics we have to do it very i mean the carefully uh, in a, in a sub sessions because certain things like you know step voltage and the, you know touch voltage uh, and uh, during the fault has to be you know uh, carefully considered so uh, in a, in a typical uh, sub sessions uh, Mm, uh, the earth resistance typical small substation like uh, substation in the sense having you know three number of four, four number of medium voltage panel and one transformer and lot of i mean the low voltage uh, switch gears so normally uh, it's recommended to reach you know 1 ohm in the uh, earth resistance and uh, in that case there are few components to be earth to the system like you know uh, in the transformer there is a body earthing in the switch gear panel there is again a body earthing in the transformer there is a neutral earthing if there is a surge arresters uh, again that it has to be earth so then i mean the, to minimize the lead length of the earthing cable so we have to manage these earthings and uh, cable length has to be minimized and uh, we can connect them to the you know there's a, a 
rounding mesh of the earth conductors so sometimes in a building uh, the earthing is through the you know uh, steel structure and uh, maybe uh, uh, they are using uh, sometimes uh, electrode separate electrodes for the me systems but my general you know my experience is if the you know earth resistance of the uh, uh, system is uh, i mean nearly 1 ohm so we can you know connect this uh, 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 the earthing both body earthing uh, neutral earthing we cannot loop them but we can connect them directly to the uh, earth mesh and it is much more you know safer that's what my what my idea and the experience next question is it the ring system that would supply power to all of our general hospitals uh that i am not quite sure because this has been managed by the uh, cb uh i don't think uh, because uh, as we experienced few 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 days back in some uh, some you know power during the utility power cuts some of the hospitals are you know uh, power up and the you know adjoining uh, houses are in a blackout but i don't think that all the hospitals are you know uh, working in the ring substation because in in colombo city for an example if you take the you know some building like you know you, you say the havelock city it has been powered through the you know primary substation which may be powered to the you know uh, some other uh, nearest hospital but this is not the same uh, same uh, primary substation which power to the sometimes you know general hospital i think uh, i am not quite sure on that um, mostly maybe not thank you uh, next one is uh, is ud level for switching uh, search while other term is for lighting search hmm can you get it yeah okay uh, lightning lightning uh, ud is for the you know uh, uh, peak uh, sorry ud is for the power frequency up is for the peak value peak value coming in two scenarios uh, one could be uh, lightning which is having the you know uh, uh, much waveform is you know 1.2 to uh, uh, 50 microsecond because, because the peak is coming within 1.2 microseconds in the uh, lightning search which is much more uh, Uh, uh stress waveform compared to the switching waveform switching waveform is uh, the peak is coming within i think uh, 12 microseconds so uh, the biggest damage done by, done by the lightning surges so so the, the the equipment has been designed for this waveform like for you know uh, uh, 33 kv it is 170 uh, kv peak ud is uh, power frequency one power frequency is you know the maximum permissible understandable voltage at power frequency power frequency in the sense it could be a uh, even 50 hertz or uh, lesser frequency so it is uh, below value like for an for an example 33 kv it is 70 kv power frequency voltage uh, up is 170 kv next one uh, in sri lanka typical lv distribution is uh, normal 400 volt uh, three phase is there any recommended secondary voltage uh, within bracket open circuit no load voltage of the transformer to be used at a typical 33 kv or 11 kv primary side hmm. correct i mean uh, generally we have to assume that you know the uh, system voltage uh, is you know uh, it's constant like uh, although the transformers coming with you know multiple tappings uh, it is very you know uh, very rare instant that we we change you know uh, 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 primary tapping to uh, some other tapping like you know we it's normally kept in the uh, zero tapping which is we assume it's mostly it's is correct it's getting the you know uh, stable 33 kv supply 
mostly in colombo but when it's go to the when it's go to the you know outside colombo scenario could be changed but uh, right then if you select the you know transformer to be 33 kv to 400 at i mean 33 kv we get at the zero tackle so 400 will be the uh, secondary side no no load voltage you know, right so what what will happen with the loading now from from there, this this transformer secondary to the main distribution panel and when it goes to the load then maybe another another 50 to 60 meters so at the load then we may not reach, reaching the you know 400 volt at the load end so it could be you know due to due to voltage uh, drop in the uh, network it could be 395 something like that which is not you know giving the you know best performance in the then the, the, the loads so mostly uh, if it is 450 i mean still the 450 is recommended i mean the uh, is the i think best selection for the uh, secondary as a secondary voltage in the you know, in, our, in our building and the industry applications Okay, thank you next question approximately how much area can feed from 42 kv a transformer while considering normal distribution in in sri lanka 42 kv a transformer uh, no i am not uh, that much clear on that maybe 40 mva transformer it's depend on the you know connected load in the for an example i mean the few years few years back colombo you know uh, uh, colombo city uh, it was said that they required you know like uh, 60 mva power in the peak time uh, i am not quite sure is that the same that uh, this gentleman is asking uh, it depend on the you know connected uh, consumers connected load no okay thank you uh, next one uh, is there a specific iec standard applicable to transformers used for solar power applications uh, not a specific one uh, uh, but uh, there is a uh, development uh, because in in solar system the night time there's no generations right then in night times there will be a losses in the transformer so there's a special design uh, with the you know optimum material and iron and the no load losses has been reduced so we call it that uh, high high efficient transformer uh, especially you know uh, design especially you know uh, uh, providing for uh, wind and solar it's having a low loss compared to the you know standard transformers okay thank you next one what about some figure of losses at mv level for instance pf losses ex losses uh, within brackets bracket as percentage figures uh, i'm not uh, can, can you repeat uh, yeah yeah sure sure so sure, i will repeat what about some figure of losses at mv level for instance Uh, tf losses tx losses i think uh, that gentleman uh, expecting uh, as percentage values percentage figures tx tf losses and tx losses uh, it's not uh, i mean what is the transformer and the uh, what is uh, refer to tx or tf i think transformer okay. yes yes i think oh, okay transformer uh, <coughs> is that you know uh, as per the as per the iec there is no specific you know uh, 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 value given for the transformer losses it's mostly the requirement uh, uh, as per the design of the transformer manufacturer o and plus uh, the cost depend on the customer requirement so if the customer is uh, asking Uh, this much of uh, percentage mostly you know the transformer losses are uh, within 1% of the uh, full load 
uh, it's like you know uh, full load capacity like for an example uh, we'll take a 1000 kilowatt uh, transformer uh, is uh, losses total losses copper and the you know uh, core losses will be you know less than 1% uh, like 10 10 10 watts right then uh, it's within that range range but if the you know uh, Customer is asking, okay, uh, this has to be improved. The efficiency has to be like you know 96 percent, 90 uh, this this much, 99.5 percent. There could be a limitation from the uh, manufacturer side, but you know it is. Uh, I mean the, the the certain things can be done, like you know that we can improve the uh, content of copper to reduce the you know copper losses and you know special material like uh, to reduce the uh, coal losses. And that can be done. Then, especially those things are practicing in the you know as as we discussed in solar and the you know wind power applications. Uh, but we cannot have the you know hundred percent efficiency over the transformers. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one, I think this question based on the case study. Uh, in my previous project, one of uh, indoor dry TF suddenly fired. In that time, uh, our two TF also worked smoothly. Why that one was blast? Is there any reason? It was under warranty period, not more than go one year. Okay. Uh, for the transformer failure, in fact, there could be a, uh, several reasons. Like you know, uh, one is the you know thermal aging is the uh, as we discussed is the biggest scenario. And uh, if there are, you know, uh, hot, hot spot due to, you know, loose connection or some other things, uh, maybe uh, the, the, the insulation get drastically fail. So in that case, you know, any times the fire can happen. Uh, I mean, another thing is the, you know, foreign substance can reach, especially, you know, dry type transform if the enclosure is not properly, you know, uh, selected. Uh, by the you know IPs, and uh, and some scenario is over voltage, uh, could be a lightning, or maybe uh, uh, over voltage uh, transient generated within the systems, and uh, especially in a you know complex network like you know having a uh, lot of a uh, lot of uh, switching equipment in the premises, lot of transformers, and in these scenarios that we have experienced that. Uh, uh, I mean the the over voltage condition can generate within the system. So if it is above the you know specific transformer specifications, because uh, sometimes it may not be required to reach the you know peak value, but you know repetitive over voltage uh, uh, impact on the transformer could you know uh, fastly deteriorate its its insulations. So I mean could be a several reasons. So if it is under warranty, then Manufacturer must have uh, replaced, but but we have to examine. We have to examine whether you know it is an external issue or a, you know it's a issue of the you know the transform itself of the you know respective uh, uh, insulation or the you know the the, the material. Sometimes uh, those things cannot be you know rather difficult to uh, identify which is the reason and which is what and those things. But generally, there could be you know multiple reasons as we as we discuss. Okay, uh, next one for the AIS MV panel. Do we need a secondary insulation for the buses? If so, what would be the best material to use? Okay, uh, it, it is the you know again the customer requirement. Uh, it is not uh, the 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 uh, requirement of the. Uh, uh, specification because the requirement is for the uh, limitation of the temperature rise right this is the uh, requirement as per the ic but you know as a secondary insulation uh, some of the uh, uh, specification requested for for the uh, uh, next layer i mean the additional layer uh, on the bus bar so maybe it, it's giving some added advantage over the you know the polluted uh, network if the you know environment is much more polluted than the normal operating condition, it could be you know uh, added advantage 
uh, no, not to have a uh, failure but uh, it could be you know uh, as per the manufacturers this second layer could be uh, uh, one manufacturer could be used mica or some other can use uh, you know epoxy cast resin uh, and uh, this could be vary but but it both has to you know confirm the you know required temperature rises to be passed uh, even with without the you know uh, this uh, these things i mean it's 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 totally a customer requirement or the manufacturer manufacturer uh, 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 attachment okay thank you and next one is it possible to connect a 400 volt standby generator to a mv system which powers loads which requires mv 11 kva with a step up transformer in a grid power outage Uh, can i repeat it yeah, yeah please please is it is it possible to connect a 400 volt standby generator to a mv system uh, which powers mm. loads which requires mv 11 kva with the step up transformer mm. in a grid power outage okay uh, in that case <laughs> we cannot uh, do any paralleling work with the utility if it is isolated i mean off grid situation of course we can we can do that but we cannot couple it to the uh, utilities but even it it won't run right uh, because uh, utilities having the big uh, demand i'm not uh, but you you can run on the you know isolated uh, uh, network okay thank you next one can we test the maximum partial discharge level at 1.375 times the insulation voltage can we test can we test the max maximum partial discharge level at 1.375 times the insulation voltage uh normally uh, normally uh, what we test the partial discharge after the you know uh, power frequency test like for an example if you take the uh, 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 take the uh, 11 kv the power frequency test is 28 volt uh, uh but but at the side we we because uh, this is uh, we we don't want to stress the switch gear in couple of time with the you know maximum voltage but uh, so uh, ic has recommended to, to do a do a uh, power frequency test at the reduced voltage uh, like 80% when it's come to the 28 kv it's around 80% is uh, like uh, 22 something like that right uh, so then we can check the you know partial discharge but i am uh, but it is i am not quite sure whether it is how this number is coming 1.73 number okay, i referring next. to some other specification so uh, i'm i'm not quite sure sorry not not sure okay I, i will go for a next question explain cap bank protection briefly okay uh, i think uh, we may require to you know find some uh, uh, detail uh, on this protection so uh, mahesh uh, if you can share the you know contacts of him then i can uh, separately uh, pass it, pass the details on to him okay okay we will we will share those information okay so uh, next one uh, when considering dry type and oil transformers dry type has more advantages though it's costly mm. is there any specific applications where oil type transformers could be recommended because 
Did you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, I mean, uh, before the you know dry type comes into the you know market, it was even in the inside the building, it is a oil transformers. But the you know problem is that the oil there is a you know lesser uh, uh, fire uh, fire point which is you know 105 Celsius. But uh, you know it's 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 so some you know even oil can be leak of the transformer any time. So then. Uh, as per the you know latest building standard that it has been uh, changed the transformer to the dry which is having much better better uh, fire resistance and self extinguish of fire and uh, this is the reason of the dry to be you know selected in the uh, 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 indoor applications but still the you know uh, the outdoor applications like you know industry and those you know application mostly even we see on the way in the you know uh, CB network, there are a lot of oil transformers installed outdoor. Uh, even you know pole mounted uh, to power up the uh, systems. So I think this uh, mostly due to the uh, new specifications and the you know uh, understanding of the. Building it has been changed to uh, uh, dry. Otherwise, you know, there are still the outdoor distribution and the you know industrial distribution uh, is with the you know oil type transformers and uh, power plant. Again, uh, the the medium power is it's oil. There's no you know uh, solution than 15 mA or 20 mA uh, uh, for the dry type. Okay, next one. Could numerical relays be used in building MV panels? Yeah, of course. I mean, this is the you know uh, latest uh, technology, not the latest. It has been you know, I mean, many decades. But earlier it was you know uh, electromechanical relays. Now still we see some the you know electromechanical relays in the, some old installations. So those things are, you know, easily can be, you know, uh, retrofit into the uh, uh, new new relay, keeping the, you know, uh, existing uh, instrumentation CT and the VT as it is. So uh, it is almost, you know, uh, now the installations coming with the numerical relays. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think now time's up. Uh, therefore, we cannot uh, go for any more questions. Uh, so I believe you have participated very informative and uh, important presentation. Uh, so uh, I take this time to thank you, uh, Engineer Adhikari. So uh, now we came into the latter part of the program and I will invite to Engineer Lakmini to conclude the session. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Mahesh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Yame Sode from Building Services Engineering Sector Committee. As we conclude today's proceedings, it's time to show our appreciation to those who helped to make this event a success. First and foremost, I would like to thank our resource person today, Engineer Indira Adhikari, for accepting our invitation and sparing us time off his busy schedule and enlightening the audience today on secondary MV and MV distribution substation in Billings. It, it, it was indeed an informative and interesting lecture and I'm sure you all enjoyed today's lecture. Now, I take this opportunity to uh, present the virtual token of appreciation. Engineer Indrika, please accept this virtual token. We are really grateful for your contribution for this webinar. Next, I would like to thank everyone in the Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee who supported in organizing this event. Further, I shall extend our gratitude to the IESL technical staff. Without the assistance of them, this event would not be possible. 
Last but not least, our sincere gratitude to all of you for participating for today's webinar. We are looking forward to see you all at the next webinar. Wishing you a pleasant evening. Good night. Thank you very much, Lakshmi.